All right, and we are recording. Uh, so first and foremost, my guest here today is Dennis. Uh, he is from the podcast, This Podcast Will Fail, and I don't care what you say, I'm at least putting it right up front. I know you haven't done any social media, nothing, no promotion, no nothing of that podcast, so I'm going to put that right in the front right there. That's okay. Maybe That's something okay. or someone will get there. It's like a, it's like an Andy Warhol kind of thing. It's just some stupid artistic uh choice that i'm making <laughs> well that's a perfect segue because i want to start right into your creative process at least right now with the podcast i know you haven't been doing a ton of uh projects if you will as of late this has been your main one and what is it at this point that you woke up one day and said i'm going to try this and let's see what happens with it so this is um the closest thing i could think to like uh, being in recovery is, is what it, what I equate it to. I um and, and I've been creating things online in in various formats, whether it's uh, audio, video, you know, writing, music. Uh, I've been creating stuff forever in a damn day. Um, and I reached a frustration point with everything. Uh, towards the end of last year in the beginning of 2020 and said, I just, I'm tired of not seeing, you know, returns on all of the time and effort and creativity that I, that I invested. So I stopped, I shut everything off. And it's not the first time in my life that I've done that where I've had to go, okay, I just need to step back and live in the real world again for a while and not pour all of my time and energy into trying to, you know, get rich and famous successful being a content creator. This podcast will fail came from an idea that, you know what? I I need to say something. I need to make something. I, I think it was a couple of months where I just, again, I put all my tools down and walked away and decided to not think about it. And uh, inevitably it, it wormed its way back into my consciousness. Like, no, you know, you know, you need to make something right. You know, you do. You know you've got crap to say. You know you've got thing. Okay, fine. But it was like an argument I was having with myself. I'm not going through that again. I'm not letting you hurt me. And uh, I was like, well, what if I just do the antithesis of everything I've ever done? Make it anonymous. I don't give a crap what my name. It doesn't matter who I am. It's irrelevant. Well, where are you? Who gives a shit? I'm just some guy talking. Uh, I think I've got interesting things to say. I think I can have interesting conversations with people, but it doesn't have to be about me and oh look at me and oh you know here's the social media get the likes and clicks and oh for christ's sake i can't fucking do it anymore right. um so that's this has been like therapy for me all along well season one was absolutely it seemed like a very like cathartic experience of you just spilling your guts about your creative endeavors the failures and everything that happened in there do you feel like in season one you kind of that's what you needed to get it out of your system Oh, it, 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 yeah, it was it was it was like purging. It right. was allowing myself to say things out loud. It, it, I can tell you the season one, honestly, was more for me to hear my voice say very uncomfortable things about myself to myself. And, and, and that's why I preface every episode that I'm, I'm here to have a conversation with myself um, because there were a lot of uncomfortable uh, truths and things I had to admit about myself to myself. And it, it, it was, it was very, uh, I guess re refreshing. It was like a release of, of all of that pent up, um, doubt and, and self loathing was just where I, I was able to work it out and it, and it felt really good. Cause you're not the only person I know of that's done something similar to this. The difference being that you actually published your thoughts. Um, I know two other people who have kind of gone through that similar experience of, I'm going to record something every day and I'm just going to talk for 20 minutes and they just themselves listen back to it. And they kind of get that same revelation, very much breakthrough, very, again, just a cathartic experience of being able to get things off your chest, get it out so that you can listen back to it instead of being built up inside of your head. Um, and, and it seems to be, uh, at least for some people, a good way to avoid paying thousands of dollars worth of uh, therapy bills. Well, certainly, certainly. And, and, you know, I've, I've been a person who has always, um, maintained a certain level of 
ego uh, regarding myself and my my mental health and and you know the headstrong typical you know I, I wouldn't say I'm you know machismo guy or any of that nonsense but I've always been very you know uh, a little too proud to admit when I'm when I'm struggling with something and I, most people are right I, I think the vast majority of people out there would sooner or later realize that yeah you know you're not as good at dealing with shit as you think you are um but i do i i find it interesting that you know why wouldn't you just release it right what's the difference who cares and that that was the big thing to me is like these are this makes i'm making myself look bad <laughs> in a way but i don't care because i would rather take that shot of seeing if having an open honest conversation would be interesting to other people Right. And, and I think that was the that was the difference for me was saying, I, pff, screw it. I'm not embarrassed. I don't care. I already expect that this thing is going to fail and nobody's going to listen anyway. So what the hell do I have to lose? Why not just put it out there? It's interesting because I've consumed a lot of your other content, maybe not all the way back to the OG Chaos Jones stuff, <laughs> which you did send me a video or two about that. Oh, but I'm so for the sorry. most part. I've gone back and, and, and looked and listened to and watched a lot of your content. And it, this podcast feels so different from all the other stuff you've done. It feels very easy, very comfortable for you to just turn on the mic and just say what's on your mind and then move on throughout your day. Well, and I think it's because it doesn't come with any strings attached or any expectation, right? There's a, I think there's a certain amount of, of just Zen acceptance in it and in, in every other thing I've ever done um, creatively and content wise has had this like built in expectation. Okay, great. You put all this time and effort into it. Now what? Now we got to make it pay. We got to make it, you know, uh, marketable and we got to, you know, I, I don't want to work nine to five in a building. I want to be, <laughs> you know, I want to be famous. Why do you think I started YouTube? You got, because you want to be Rhett and Link. You know, it's it's this like all these years of this never ending cycle of, oh, shit, I can do that and I can get famous doing that. Oh, hell, I can do it better than he does and and trying all these different things creatively and then finding myself at the at the bottom of a, you know, emotional well of saying, well, pff, that was fun. Sure. I learned things and it was, it was interesting to be creative, but it didn't amount to Jack. I'm still having to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and drag my ass into a building that I don't want to be in to work, you know, for a paycheck every other Thursday and pay, you know, pay the electric bill. Do you feel like the difference in a lot of what you perceive to be failures is just that extra bit of time? And that's a loaded question, admittedly, but I feel like at least when I've watched and looked through a lot of your content, like you jump from this format to that format, to this thing, to that thing. And I think you even had a video at one point where you had talked about, you're doing too much. Like there's so much going on. You you got to record this live stream and you got to do this song with this guy. And then you're going to do a gaming thing. And then you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And you, you spread yourself so thin that there's no continuity toward like with your content. Whereas I feel like with this podcast, you're starting to form a lot more of that continuity. Um, that's an interesting observation, I think. Um, because I, I, I see for me, mm -hmm. I equate it all to a weird, almost like um, uh, ADHD in a way. Um, I was hopping through things because I couldn't stay focused on any one thing for any length of time. <laughs> and, right. and I found myself wanting to meet more people and get involved in more things um, because one thing was never enough. And, and I just need, I, I need to multitask and I need to, you know, I need to have seven or eight irons in the fire because I'm going to get bored with one of these eventually and walk away. Uh, regardless of anything else yeah i that's interesting just yeah. the idea of having so many uh you know so many blades in the fire in the forge there and in to me it felt like you had some really good content and then you would stop doing it whatever that thing was like one of the ones that um you did a few of and that was what is it uh how to deal with bro you had a couple thousand views a few thousand yeah. views on some of those what happened like those I, seemed really cool, you know. Okay, so all right, I think what you're referencing, I've got. Oh golly, I've got this set of videos I did, um, around how to deal with liars. Yes, that's it. 
And these goddamn videos, I swear to God, they are the most <laughs> unexpected result from what was supposed to be throwaway bullshit um, and, and pretending to be somebody that I am not and was not when I filmed these things. I somehow made myself look like some kind of academic guy that knew what the fuck he was talking about. No, I had spent about four hours researching shit on Google and copying and pasting a bunch of interesting things off of random articles about how to deal with people who lie to you. And I thought, okay, this is like this professor character that I'm putting together here is going to sit there and make a serious video about how to deal with pathological and, and compulsive liars. And you're like, the damn thing took a life of its own. I swear. I got two comments on it today. For Christ's Did sake. you really? I get comments on it every single day, just about. Wow. And people just spill their freaking guts and tell me their life stories and tell me their tragedies. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't know how to help you. Like, I, I can't even reply to the comments <laughs> anymore because it's just, oh, man, that's got to blow. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Were you replying to, to any of those comments? For a long time, I was. Really? Yeah. Wow. I okay. really did. I Because I, that was in the world of YouTube. When you're when you're learning the, the the ropes of being a successful creator on YouTube, one of the basic tenets is you reply to every single comment, right? That is that is necessary for growth and engagement because it's it's actually for a really uh, stupid selfish reason. By replying to the comment, you are then prompting that person to come back and land on the video page again, and the video starts playing again. So you have now garnered two views off of one person because you replied to their comment they come back and now you've racked up a second view from this person uh it, it and, and the engagement is there and, and especially now that this person thinks that you're a real uh, uh you know worthwhile person to communicate with then they might subscribe they see you as oh yeah this guy's cool i definitely want to deal with him so i did for the longest but then it just it just like i said it got to be way 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 too much um. Yeah, yeah. That, yesterday, two, two, two comments yesterday. That is so like granular, and I can see why you kind of stopped doing the YouTube <laughs> thing, because the whole battle for engagement and doing all these little things just to get a few more views, like, bro, it seems like it's not worth it to some degree. When it's good, it's good. You well, know, what is good though? Like when when spending shit is eight moving. hours a day replying to people about how their life sucks. Well, but but see, it's not just that, right? And that okay. was the problem I always had too. Was I could never really figure out that this whole idea of of working within a niche or a niche, whatever you say. Mm -hmm. um, I could never do it. I, I again that that sort of ADHD made me hop around. Let me try this. Let me try this. Let me try this. And some of that stuff's successful. And some of it never, you know, never garners a single piece of attention. And then other stuff blows up. And it's it's those it's almost like um, uh, 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 a gambling addiction <laughs> in a way. Right. You, you wow. do everything you can to make something that you think is going to hit big. And, and then you pull that lever and roll those dice. And, it either, and when it hits, it hits and it feels amazing. And you're seeing hundreds of views on a video and people engaging and sharing it. And you're like, oh, my God. And, you know, another right. video set that had led to a whole different world of friendships now that I have online with people that I never would have met otherwise. I mean, I, I guess I can see where that would come from, like the being able to engage at that level and get excited that things are popping off. But did it ever take away from that creative spirit, that creative process? Like you would see something hit and you're like, Oh, I need to do a bunch more of these. And it kind of dies because you're trying to make something into something that it's not. Did that ever happen to you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I did two follow-ups actually to that liars video. Um, one of them did marginally well, nowhere near the success of the first. And the third one is, I don't know, it just it might as well not exist. <laughs> um, I, I quickly came to the understanding that you you can only catch lightning in a bottle once. And uh, and I saw that with other projects as well with with YouTube, uh, a series I did on a America's Got Talent performer went 
gang that's the biggest th- couple hundred thousand views between three videos and and again made friendships now with people and I made a bunch of money off that that's the only time I ever made any real money off YouTube but I couldn't I I couldn't see myself continuing to do the same thing over and over and over and over I just couldn't and and people were saying to me at the time yeah this is great you need to you need to spend more time focusing on this like you could you could do profiles on other reality show contestants and you could do things on YouTubers and profile. I'm like, yeah, but I don't fucking care. I, right. <laughs> it's not interesting to me anymore. I, I, I don't want to convert, c- c- commit all my time to just this one thing now and be stuck in a, in a, in a, in a box. Do you feel like this podcast will fail puts you in a box like that? I was a little worried at first. Um, yeah. When I got to the end of season one and thought, Oh, okay. You got there. You got it all off your chest. The, you know, self therapy session is over. Now what, what am I supposed to do? So I think now I'm on season four and I've, I've, um, decided to just call it, you know, every month is, a, is its own season just cause that's, that's convenient to follow a calendar. Um, and each time I've gotten to the end of quote unquote season and thought, well, shit, what am I doing now? <laughs> Because I don't want to do the same thing I just did last month. That's that's boring. I played it out. I've done it. I did a a month on what do you want, you know, and trying to get people mm-hmm. to tell me, you know, their story and and all these other things. And now, I don't know. I you know, I I, I worry. I guess it, it hasn't put me in a box yet, but I I do get a little nervous sometimes that I'm going to find myself in a rut, not having any idea what I'm going to do next because I just don't want to repeat. Well, it seems like you're expanding it now, right? From season one, just some guy sitting in his car complaining about all the shit that went wrong to talking about more intricate things and even having people on your podcast. It seems like once a month or twice a month is kind of where you're heading towards. It seems like you're starting to kind of expand what it is you're allowing yourself to do. And what I find interesting about that is that it seems like you're giving yourself a little more latitude to make some stuff happen so that you're not in that box. Is that a conscious thing that you're doing or do you feel like that's just organically happening? Wow. That's a good question. Um, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think consciously I'm, I'm realizing that I've, I've gotten over so many of my hangups from this past year. Um, and I, and I am consciously allowing myself to, I mean, it's just the fact that I'm having people on as interview guests, right? Just to have you on, to have some of my previous content creator friends on, to have my freaking kids on, um, you know, it, it's, it's almost like I'm able to look back now at, at some of the things I did that I really enjoyed doing and saying to myself, you know what? It's so uh, you were good at that. We we were we I loved interviewing people. For Christ's sake, I when I did internet radio 10 12 years ago, having an interview guest was just such a huge rush for me. And I used to interview bands and uh, movie producers and actors and artists and it was always like the coolest thing. And now here I am all these years later realizing, you know what? You can I can get away with some of that stuff now and and do it in a way that doesn't carry all of this uh, uh, burden of expectation. I think that's what where ultimately I'm now is I'm realizing that some of the things I used to really enjoy doing, I can start doing again with this podcast as a medium. And if nothing comes of it, OK, that's fine. It doesn't matter. That's, you know, it, it, if it if it blows up, cool. If not, it, it wasn't going to blow up anyway. So who gives a shit? Let me enjoy doing what I'm doing. I definitely appreciated the stuff that you've done as far as interviewing. I feel like those interviews are, pardon my French, but a fucking home run. Um, and Thank I even you. liked some of the ones you did on YouTube, um, although they were a little more messy, but they were still like I, I could see that kind of fire in your eyes of this is really cool. I'm really into this. Like, um, let me see. I'm looking at the one Shaman's Harvest live. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I had to take a drink. Um, that was well, I might have hit you with a deep one there, but dude, there's another one you did at the Fringe Festival as well that was really cool with the uh, I forget her name, but the Sand Art Lady. Yeah, yeah, and those were all very spur of the moment. Um, it was almost like <laughs> I think in those days I was thinking of myself as like a guerrilla journalist <laughs> in some it, uh, weird listen, way. 
I'm a little biased because I know you and I, I enjoy a lot of the stuff and I, I get to see a little behind the curtain, which makes it more interesting for me. But the times that you did that, I feel like were those were really cool. And not for nothing, that shirt that you wore for Fringe Fest, bring it back. What shirt was that? I don't even know what the hell Dude, you're talking it, about. It's like a it's a white, like southwestern flare with purple oh. and like taupe or some shit. Dude. I love that. That is shirt. the greatest shirt I've seen I know, in a ruined. long time. I know. It's what? gone. It got ruined. Oh, no. I loved that shirt for so many years. That was my Best Native shirt American ever. shirt. Oh, dude. Um, no, but uh, but honestly, it was it was those moments of being able to have that spontaneous, like with the Shaman's Harvest, I swear to God, I, I the whole time expected to be tackled by two very large men at any possible moment because I <laughs> we had left the club. And we were leaving, walking back to our car, and we happened to see the lead singer sort of on the side of the building next to the the big semi RV trailer. And I thought, and I told, I looked at my wife, I go, stay here, stay here, stay here. <laughs> and right. bolted along the side of the thing, expecting to be tackled any second. Get up to the guy. Hey, man, just, just want to, you know, like two seconds trying to turn my camera on. And this, I can't, I don't, Jesus Christ, I can't believe I got away with it. And you're <laughs> right. That was like a highlight for me to have it. And when I, <laughs> I had this stupid tagline because the driving me crazy. I'm like, hey, and you're driving me crazy. Like, well, I don't know about any of that, but yeah. <laughs> that was just fun. But you were but you were like doing it. You were, you know what I mean? You were pursuing a passion and you could absolutely see it in those. And I, I hope that you keep doing that uh kind of interviewish stuff in in this podcast will fail because that's some of my some of my favorite stuff um so far. I, I intend to, and and I think you know I'd like to be able to line up a quote unquote guest uh, and and have some reason for that person to be there. And my problem is though I overthink everything, and I, I've got it's got to be the right person for the right reason. It's got to fit within the damn box that I put together for this month, and it's got to I got to make sure I can do it in a way so that I'm ready to put it on a Friday. This is that OCD shit I'm telling you about. <laughs> um, this is the stuff I feel like stopped you in a lot of your other. Um, you know, creative endeavors, you put these restrictions on how you're going to do something so much when uh, one of the things at least I've learned from you, and I've, I've called you this before, and you always push back on it, but I view you as a mentor in a lot of ways, Ugh. especially in this creative space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep doing it. <laughs> in this space specifically, because for literally for the, la- the almost the entire time I've known you, this the minute I brought up your YouTube channel, I found out about that stuff. And we started talking about it um, as coworkers. You had always been like, well, you should try it. You should try it. See what happens. You should try it. And I never, ever got around to it until finally really putting some time and effort into this one, this Caleb versus self. So yeah. uh, a lot of this is your fault, to I, be clear. I am I am proud to be the, um, <laughs> you know, responsible for this because it is. I, I, I like seeing other people succeed at their stuff too, right? And and I think I, I it's part of why I do what I do professionally, because I like to see people um, succeed and be happy in what they're, what they're actually doing. And when you told me all of a sudden you were going for it, I was just like, Oh, (gasps) squee, like nerdgasm. Hold on. Wait, what? He's actually going to do this. And so it's funny when you say these other folks that, you know, that, that have, that have gone ahead and put voice to recorder and then just don't do anything. What the, what do you have? Whoever you are, if you're listening to this right now, what the fuck is wrong with you? Just post it. Who cares? You have nothing to lose, you know? And, and, and I'm, I was like, so super happy to, to have you reach that point of realizing, yeah, let's go time to go. Yeah. I think ultimately what it came down to was my thought process of what was the, what's the worst that's going to happen? Like, right. no one's probably going to listen to this. So right. I can just have fun with it. And I think that's a small difference right now. And something that you've instilled in me is, well, don't worry about it. Just do it. See what happens. It'll take a life of its own eventually. As you're doing it, you'll figure it out. You'll think, I don't really like this. I'll do that. This isn't really for me. I'll try this. And then eventually you'll get to a spot where it's comfortable for you. You're having fun with it. And that's the one spot I feel like you make a different jump that I don't think I'll ever make. And that is, well, I shouldn't say you will, because I don't know how this podcast will fail will end up. But in your previous stuff, like you said, it's about the clicks, it's the likes, it's the shares. You get that little high off of when things are popping off. I don't know that I'll ever get to that point. And I'm okay with that. I mean, Excuse you me. know, it, it it's part of 
your personality though too right you've always been this is the thing i've always appreciated in the time that i've known you and when i've worked with you is how oh, you are more concerned with like the 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 quality of something right it, even if we fail and this was always the way it was with with our team right we we're go- we're going to do it the right way and we're going to put our effort into like if 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 this thing crashes and burns we can hold our head up and say no this we we did what we needed to do and we did it the right way and and we can be proud of the work even if it didn't go where we wanted it to to go i can tell you that part of where i am now is because of that time that that you and i spent working together where i you know recognized that look i i i want to be i want to be a screw off i want to get away with murder and and i want to i want to be able to get recognized and and accolades for you know some bubble gum and duct tape bullshit that just happened to work out rather than you know looking at the the big picture and then realizing that we've got to you got to do it the right way you were you were the one that brought me back to a point professionally of realizing it doesn't matter if we win or lose we we need to be able to hold our head up and say that we did it the right way so of all that. the things you could have gotten from me, <laughs> I'm glad it was that one. <laughs> so let me pivot from that a little bit and let me ask you a question because this is stuff that I've never been able to find. And that is what has been your favorite piece of content that you've ever done that does not live on the new podcast and does not live on YouTube on your channel? Boy, Jesus. Um <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. You, you got me a little bit. On, that's fine. That's fine. A little bit on the spot there. That's okay. Um, because you've talked about you've done quite a few collabs on your own channel. I know there's right. links from your collabs that you've done to other places, but I've never been able to find something that that's out there somewhere that I don't know about that is your thing. Like at the time, that was you were the most proud of. I've never been able to find that thing that doesn't live on your channel, driving me crazy. Okay. So cuz cuz that does make it it does make it you know a little more difficult to pinpoint something down. Um I can I mean I can rewind the clock all the way back to 2010 when I had hung up my headphones so to speak and 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 stopped hosting the internet radio show I was doing. I was doing a a Howard Stern wannabe show for 4 years like doing a morning drive, morning zoo kind of show every Saturday night. And when I stopped, um, because there's all kinds of great highlights and 99% of that shit is lost to the ages. Like there are no recordings of it that I can find. I've got very little of it actually stored and saved, but it was, it was, I had built a community um, around that and all of these other show hosts and all these other DJs. And there was a time where I was then, once I hung up the microphone, they all wanted to talk to me and they all wanted to, you know, have me come on and, 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 and those were cool. Like all of a sudden being a guest on someone else's show was like, Oh shit. Like the, 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 these people somehow have, I've managed to earn their respect and, and they want me uh, on theirs. So there's those, there's those times when I was, when I was recognized as, yeah, man, you built this thing, you built this website, you built this radio network. Um, you've given us a home and, and all this other stuff. So, so those are out there. I don't know where, I don't even know where to begin to tell you to even find <laughs> at this point. Right. It's, it's all scattered. How, the ones. how big was that community when you, when you ended up hanging it up? I mean, from what I understand, it was, it was a sizable community. Yeah. Um, Let's see. I mean, my show was every Saturday night. There was a daily sports broadcast. Uh, a guy out of California would get on at 7 p.m. every single night and do his sports show. On Saturdays also, there was um, another talk show just preceding mine that he was a co-host, like more of a, of a, of a pop culture entertainment show. There was... The idea of what everybody does nowadays on like Twitch streaming where people just sit around and bullshit and don't, there really is no one. It's just like a, a round there. There was a group, the drunken round table that we had okay. on and, and they were on once a week. Um, there were four or five different DJs all over the world. Cause we also had a, 
a 24 seven streaming music channel. So they would get on and host their hours. One was in London, one was in Florida, a couple other spots like that. So I think in total, we probably, Oh God, then yeah, there was they, they, some of them came and went, I think at its peak, I probably had six or seven talk shows and about four or five DJs uh, in various locations around the world that had said, okay, I'm, I'm flunking out on all of these platforms no, I can't get it, you know, I, I can't afford this anymore and, and whatever. And um, they they were looking for a home. You know, every time we turn around, another platform would go belly up and defunct and we would have to scramble. There was no such thing as YouTube live in those days, right? Twitch didn't exist. There was nowhere to broadcast yourself unless you were the one sitting there coding the actual streaming server and paying somebody, you know, 10, 20 bucks a month to to give you the bandwidth. Um yeah, it was it was pretty pretty sizable, and so I would get something in the, the order of a couple of hundred views a week towards all of those different shows. You know, that's crazy because that was like the wild wild west of streaming internet radio. Then, like you were saying, companies were just going belly up, and and things weren't happening um, mm-hmm. again before YouTube Live, Twitch, all the ways that you can do it now. That that didn't exist back then. You had to do all the back end stuff pretty much yourself. The, the the game changing the game changing factor for everybody in this world was when Google bought YouTube. That's when the whole paradigm shifted and the world changed and it became a turnkey operation that anybody can get on and do it themselves. Um, but you're right. We you know, we 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 would have to manage everything and um, troubleshooting. I'd be having. Oh, that's right. I had a freaking Sunday morning religion show, for Christ's sake. I had this pastor. Wait, out wait, of wait, Georgia. Wait, 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 wait. I'm wait not kidding. You had you had a, a, a Christian yeah. radio on your network. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That also had Chaos Jones? Sort of. <laughs> um, sort of. Because yeah, Pastor Rick would get on every Sunday morning and he would do his sermon. He would hold church online and broadcast it over our network, which never made sense to me because <laughs> Like, wow, dude, are you hoping to like save the sinners? Because we're a bunch of foul mouth, rowdy, right. you know, uh, but no, that's right. That's right. Um, and, uh, tragically, Pastor Rick uh, passed away a few years ago, but um, that's too bad. It, it is. It is a shame. He's a nice guy. He was a really nice. Yeah, guy. yeah. I just don't understand the concept of having a, a religious radio show also on the same network as what you guys were doing, or at least you, I know for sure. Look, Chaos Jones was definitely trying to push some boundaries there. That was the whole point. Pushing boundaries. Right. Like I, I have one of one of my short list of guiding principles in life uh, is to embrace the ridiculous. If it sounds like it doesn't make any sense, if that sounds like the most ridiculous idea, I want to do that. I I want to upset the natural order of things. Um it's just how I'm wired. I, I, I don't like status quo. I don't like static stuffy. No, you can't do that because of X. Fuck you. I'm going to do it. You know? Yeah. That's, I, I just had a, an episode with, uh, with my brothers on, uh, Nietzsche and finding yourself. And, hmm. uh, one of them is the, uh, you know, embrace the difficulty of self discovery and say, West, say yes to what gives you meaning. And if the ridiculous is what gives you meaning, then more power to you. I don't know. I'm close. I guess I'm close to that. I'm more like the say yes to anything because just okay. like we just like we got done <laughs> saying a moment ago, what's the worst thing that can happen? What is it? Why does it matter? Yeah. Are, are you embarrassed about something? Well, then you shouldn't be recording anything in the first place. <laughs> if that's what it comes down to. Oh, it's not going to look up. People are going to think, I'm, no, who cares? Who gives a shit? Well, that's that's number four on that, that talk that we had was find your true values. So if it doesn't meet your true values, you're not going to you're not going to hit record. Right. If it's not something that really reflects you or, or something that's, you know, a part of you, which is interesting, you know, I, I feel it, it comes full circle a lot of the times to that, to whatever those values are. You know, and, and, and look, that I think that there's a lot of shift um, in society around those ideas right now, because frankly, the society that you and I, and, and granted, I'm like 10 years older you, than you, but still the society that you and I grew up in was, was established and dictated by a generation of people that are going to be gone in the next 10 years. And folks your age are the ones that are, are driving culture. Folks that are 
five, ten years younger than you are the ones that are driving culture right now. Old, mm-hmm. I'm the old fart now. All of a sudden, like when, when did that happen? When when did I become Boba Fett standing there asking for his damn armor back? Um, but that's <laughs> that's who I am now. So it, it's interesting to me that that all of these preconceived notions about self discovery and 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 what you can do to to have a fulfilling life all the old rules are basically gone and yeah and, and I, yeah. I find that is the, the the big driver for a lot of people that are coming forward and just creating content because you know it's not taboo you can say the things you want to say and create the things you want to create and be damned if and who, whoever doesn't like it fuck you if you don't like it then don't listen go go listen to something else yeah that's an interesting uh yeah, interesting kind of shift there. I'll go back to what your um, what your son was saying, right? Generationally speaking, as soon as you got out of high school, you were working. Yep. You know, he doesn't have to, right? Not that you're saying you can just do nothing, but, you know, there's not that specific need to go out and earn a living so that you can pay for everything. Like, he's good with where he's at, he's going to go to school, and he can continue to discover himself, whatever that ends up being. And because he's, you know, got you and, and, and his mom to support him, uh, he can go through that process. And that's part of, I think, that, that paradigm shift from that last generation. A little bit, too, because I know, I, th- I think you're right. And, and I think it comes from this idea that you were supposed to, uh, in my day, I guess, um, you're supposed to grow up fast, right? And, and, and you, you need to hit the ground running and you need to, you need to build a life and, and you need to work and whatever. There was no... And and here, I mean, shoot, I grew up in the '70s and '80s when that was supposedly some kind of a, a, a cultural revolution. But I realized that all of my because I, I have three adults that are my kids for Christ's sake a, a 23 year old, a 21 year old, and an 18 year old. And I and I've had this uh, revelation and understanding very recently that I didn't force them to grow up fast. Um, and it, <laughs> in some ways, it was a little hard to to deal with because the, the, then I have to fight back these notions of dude, when I was your age, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> shit, I was already a thousand dollars in debt with RG and E by the time I was your age. What are you talking about? <laughs> that you that's, want a new that's Twitch old game man coming out in you. Oh my, yeah. You want a new switch game. Uh, I'm, what? I was over there trying to freaking gather bottles and cans to get money for milk for Christ's sake. What are you talking about? But I, I appreciate the fact that I can let them grow up at their pace and let them live their life and, and, and have the self-discovery opportunities that I never had. And I think that's, you know, that, that, that's, that's a guiding thing for me is I I just want to make things better for my kids than, than I had. Yeah. Pacing is an interesting word there because that is something that, um, even for me when I was growing up and, and like you said, I'm about 10 years younger than you there was no pacing. Like you finished high school, you went to college. Once you're done with college, you're going to get a job. Once you get a job, you have a family, so on and so forth. Um, it, it, different people grow up at different paces. Your 18 year old might be more mature than your 23 year old. You know, that's just something that may happen or, you know, I mean, it, when it's, it comes it's to true. pacing, that I, I just find that concept interesting because I've never thought about it in that way. Right. And, and you're exactly right. You know, it's, it's, um, I never, I, I put the expectation on him. Look, here's the deal. This will always be your house. Uh, if you're going to stay here and live here, I just need you to do something, <laughs> anything, right. right? If you're working, great. If you're in school, great. If neither of those conditions exist, then you need to contribute to the household. In some way, you need to be the one responsible for X and X, you know? Right. Um, so you're not eliminating responsibility. What you're saying is, is I this, this is a space for you to figure out whatever it is that you need to feel, figure out. Right. Right. And, and, um, I'm hoping that that comes to a, a better, you know, outcome. I, I had to learn things the hard way and I don't, I don't agree with the old fashioned notions of, well, you're just going to have to figure it out for yourself. And I had to learn the hard way. And so do you No, man, isn't the whole point that, that you want better for your kids than you had. Mm-hmm. That's how yeah. I look at it. Well, I appreciate that because I know that uh, when I talk to you about how what you're doing with your kids, that, that definitely uh, applies in a lot of ways in my mentality and what I try to do with my kids because uh, at least from the conversations I've heard so far, it sounds like you're doing a hell of a job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, let me pivot from there too because the other thing I really, really wanted to talk to you about 
is a YouTube series that you did mm. and you wrote a book on, Uh-oh. which is keto oh, and no. your weight loss and your weight loss journey, because not for nothing, that ranks up there as some of the best stuff that you've done, I think. And, and I really? think it ranks up there so highly because it's something that I, I got to watch you actively struggle with. And that sounds shitty from my end, but... <laughs> But that that falls in line with one of my own life philosophies, and that is is you know struggling is necessary, overcoming challenges and obstacles is necessary, and that one I feel like was a big one for you. So in your journey, what what was the largest thing that you had to really overcome? Was it the discipline of eating right? Was it was it exercising a little bit more? What, what was it about that journey that was like the most difficult thing to overcome? Um. So. Uh, the answer to that, buckle up, kid. You're going to have this answer. <laughs> okay. The answer to that is, um, the hardest part was overcoming my own, um, uh, self-destructive and self-loathing tendencies. Right. I, my, my whole adult life, um, I've been, I've been overweight. From from the very first call center job I got at 23 years old, where there was a vending machine with Coke and snacks, uh, and my my I earn a living by sitting on my ass and talking to people on the phone. Um, I got fat very quickly, and you know, it was never there was never a need for me to express or, or exercise any kind of self discipline in that space. It didn't matter. Right. Who gives a shit? Oh, well, guess what? Now you're 23 and your doctor's having to put you on blood pressure medication. But that's fine because, you know, I got health insurance and it's a pill every day. Who gives a shit? I like my Oreos and, <laughs> you know, Maybe zebra cakes, uh, not zebra. No, 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 don't don't date me that much. There were no zebra cakes in my day, pal. Um, All right, that's fair. We had we had, uh, I guess, what, ho-hos and, and ding-dongs. But well, I just um, always think of zebra cakes because you fucking with me for two weeks. Little Debbie. Yo, the zebra. I mean, that's a. <laughs> That's that's a that's a that's a high point of my career is <laughs> is watching our staff go nuts trying to cover your desk in zebra cakes every day. That was the greatest thing ever. God, that <sighs> pissed me off so much. Oh, anyway, sorry. Continue. Anyways, what, what were we talking about? Um, you know, <laughs> as you may or may not know, I, you know, I, I'm also a lifelong recovering alcoholic. And it all plays into those same exact uh, mental barriers that, that someone who is an addict of any kind, um, puts up for themselves, right? You, you put up these protective walls that say, no, 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 you're absolved. It doesn't matter. It's okay. You know, you're just living, you're just coping, you're just doing what you need to do, uh, to get by. And, and, uh, you know, that's, that's fine. And you're not a bad person. It doesn't have another zebra cake. Who gives a shit, right? right. Have, have another drink. What the fuck does it matter? Um, the hardest part of that journey when I, when, when I finally decided, okay, ah, you know, you're going to be 45 in, in, in short order here, your family history dictates that you are not going to have much of a shelf life behind 70, 72. Um, you got to do something. I have to do something. And it was for the first time since, since I had quit drinking, it was the first time that I ever kind of sat myself down and said, look, fucker, you have to play by these new rules. You have no choice. And and that was hard. It was really hard to resist temptations, to, to stick to the fact that you're cutting 100 calories out of your diet every single week. Like, oh, no, man, leave me alone with my 3,500 calories a day. Fuck you. <laughs> um, no, you're going to start it at 25 and then in a few weeks it's going to be 2400 and then another week 23 and and now it's happening and now you're going to let your 18 year old son wait 17 at the time you're going to let your 17 year old son drag your ass to the gym two days a week and beat the shit out of you with weights and and exercises and you're going to sweat and you're going to it it was it was the discipline straight up it was the discipline and that's interesting because a lot of the times that people talk to me about discipline, their first thought goes to, well, you're a military guy, you're disciplined. That's not true at all. <laughs> discipline is something that the military, yes, they can give you, but what they actually give you is the highest degree of accountability you've ever had in your life. Mm. 
There are people dictating every step you take, everything you say, every move you make is dictated by somebody. So it's not discipline in the sense that like I can withstand X, Y, Z, or I can maintain something myself using discipline. No, it's just the highest level of accountability. And I think that that's what most people struggle with is this idea of discipline as opposed to being able to be accountable, which I guess ultimately is kind of the same thing. But my question to you with that is, is was it the accountability that was more of a challenge or was it getting into that structure of discipline where you were eating, you know, the same salads or you had this plan laid out? Because in your book, you've got you've got plans, you've got ideas on how to achieve certain things. It seems like all that came from you being more accountable to yourself. So here, I can I can equate this to something we were talking about earlier, right? Remember, we're talking about YouTube and it was that it was that endorphin rush of the payoff right mm-hmm. and i think that in talking to other people that have been on weight loss journeys quote unquote when it's working it works and you are willing at that point to take it and just deal with it because it sucks and it still hurts and it's not fun and i i you know I don't want to do this anymore, but Jesus Christ, every, every week that I step on the scale, the number is smaller that it's all in the payoff. And, and so it is the, it is the personal discipline of saying, yes, I I, don't give yourself a choice. Don't give yourself room to think that the cheat day is okay. There was no such thing as a cheat day for me. And again, I learned that when I got sober, um, I had to learn that lesson twice, once at age 17 and once again at age 25. Um, Because between age 17 and 25, I slowly got to a point where I thought, eh, you know, it's okay. It's all right. No, we'll just, you know, I'm I'm at a party with friends. I'm, you know, what's a beer? What's a big deal? But mm -mm, no. And and I'll tell you right now, brother, uh, it's funny that you you bring this thing up as I'm I'm failing. (laughs) I'm failing. (laughs) Right now, I've gained a lot of weight in 2020, and um, it's hard. And and there's been several times that I've had to try and start to think about how do I how do I reclaim that level of um, self discipline that I had for for that whole I don't know was it eight months uh, that I was hardcore towards losing weight. You wrote a book though. I did. So there should be a framework in there already for you. You ah, crack that book open and get back on it, right? I, or, or is I it going to be different this time? I don't know. I truly don't. I don't know because there's also times when I don't want to hear my own voice. I know what I said. I don't need to fucking listen to it again. Um, but you may be onto something. I don't. You you, you might have actually just given me something to think about, which is how about you go <laughs> back and read your own book, jackass. Um. <laughs> That might, that might, there might be some merit in that somewhere, but, but it's almost like, if you think about it, I already know. I already know exactly. I remember every damn word. I, <laughs> I know what I was doing when I wrote that book. And, uh, do you remember every word though? I do. Honest to you God. You can recite the entire book? Probably. Very likely. Get out of here. I don't believe but you. Just the themes, right? The themes and the basic that structure and, and, um, uh, you know, look, half, the back half of it was complete bullshit, too, because the book didn't even come about until I realized I was posting a video every week on YouTube and I right. had written this front half of the book that was like, here's my thought process. Here's what I've learned. Here's the resources I've used to understand this ketogenic diet and high fat, low carb and why it works and the science. Blah, 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 blah. OK, but that only amounted to like uh, a leaflet. And I had been posting these videos on YouTube every week, documenting my progress, again, mostly for myself. I said, like, you know what? Holy shit. I can just go back and transcribe all of those videos <laughs> and turn every video into a chapter. Um, so, again, I, I, I'm just hmm, there might be some value in listening back to it. But at the same time, I, I, I don't know. I guess I'm too busy self-deprecating and going, yeah, he didn't know what the fuck he was doing the first time. Why would he know now? <laughs> you say you don't didn't know what you were doing the first time, but how much weight did you lose in that eight months? Oh God, seventy pounds, seven zero. So don't tell me you didn't know what you were doing because oh. you had results. It felt like really an good ones too. No, I swear to God, it felt like like blind, stupid, clueless do da luck is what it felt like. Um, I well, stumbled onto something and I did it and it worked. 
you could try to replicate those results and see if it was blind stupid luck. I've tried, brother, a couple times. I really have. <laughs> uh, there's been two or three times over the past several months that I've said, no, I, I'm going to discipline it. Here we go. We're going to lock it down. Um, mm, haven't been successful just yet. But so I, I bring that whole thing up specifically because while you and I were working together, I was running my ass off. Yes. I was running 30, 40 miles a week. Uh, at a similar pace as as you were doing your keto thing. And what's interesting to me is that after we had moved on, because as soon as I had moved on to my new position, you had been moved to a new team altogether. And that seemed to be a catalyst for us to be like, okay, we got other stuff to do. You can't really maintain this lifestyle or you can't keep doing this or, and, and I found, I mean, I could just be speaking for you, but that's what happened to me, right? I have this new job. I have to learn what the hell I'm doing. I don't have time to be running around out in the dark every fucking day like I was. Yeah, there's a there's a couple pieces that I think interfered. One that was one of them, right? All of a sudden, I've got this new set of priorities. Um, they came in and broke up the band. We didn't ask for this shit. Um, you know, they they came in, they 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 busted apart our house of Legos and made me go play in a different sandbox that I don't like. <laughs> so, um, there is that, and it was that disruption. And I think for me too, um, it was the fact that I. I hit my goal. Um, and, and I think that might've been one of the mistakes I made was being so focused on a goal number, uh, that once I achieved it and actually once I exceeded the goal, I was like, eh, okay, good. We're fine. Whatever. Go back to life now. <laughs> you know? And I think that gotcha. was a mistake. Um, so it was the payoff. It was the payoff. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's I'd be interested to see if you crack that book open and give it another shot. Well, there's one sitting in my desk at work. I don't know. <laughs> you know, the funniest thing is when I get a royalty deposit from Amazon every once in a while. That's the weirdest thing in the world to me. Like, what's that money? Where'd that three dollars come? Oh, shit. Somebody bought the book. Wow. Oh, that's right. That's right. It is, it is on Amazon. <laughs> it is on Amazon. How not to diet the keto way. A bunch of harsh. You shit. put in so much elbow grease into just the cover and the back page (laughs) no i didn't because at one point i was like oh that sounds like it would be something fun to do and then i was watching you fucking with the graphic thing and i was like nah nope not doing that come on that's that's ridiculous that's that's bullshit that's all i can't i came and talked to you and you're like i spent four hours last night trying to just put my picture in the box (laughs) it's all plug and play whatever templates and it's and four the, hours does not sound like plug and play my guy the, here's why you're missing a piece a vital piece. it was four hours because i have problems with anything ever being good enough that's that there's a little thread of perfectionism in there and if it just if it, if it looks even a micrometer off well fuck gotta start over you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why that took four hours because I it's never good enough. That's why. Have you ever heard of Fiverr? Oh yeah, you just I've, go there and have somebody do it, bro. I have purchased more shit on Fiverr in the last ten years. I have sold shit on Fiverr. <laughs> no way. What yeah. have you sold on Fiverr? Uh, commercial advertising and voiceover services. So, oh, well, voiceover makes sense, but yeah. what's what do you mean commercial advertising? Well, that was a perfect. It was a perfect setup. I, I right, rewind again. Go back to the radio station. So, I went out. I had this platform, this uh, radio. So, here's the deal, right? The, the radio stations right now they're either a W, right? So you know W R O C in Rochester, right? Or K, right? K Rock and K whatever on the West Coast, right? Yep, so we had yep. this idea that it's internet radio, so we're going to use an I, right? Everybody either uses a W, W or K, R, C, and Cincinnati. You're too young for that. But um, <laughs> we used an I for internet, and we knew that we were a bunch of rowdy, loudmouth, potty-mouthed morons, and TMI was the whole thing. Too much information, TMI. So okay. we were ITMIRadio.com. Oh, Jesus. Yes, right? And that also explains why there was such a weird, eclectic mix of people that were broadcasting. But I realized there's these people on Fiverr that are willing to pay money for advertising services. I love creating audio. I love talking to microphones. So it made the perfect sense for me to go out on Fiverr and say, I will create a 30-second ad for your business 
and I will run it on our radio station for whatever number of days or hours or weeks or whatever for $5, for $10, for $20. And fuck, dude, we made some money. Really? We made some money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think over the course of um, wow. just shy of a year, we probably made a couple hundred bucks off of little $5 and $10 ad campaigns. It was great. Wow. We loved it. What was the coolest ad campaign? Oh, um, there, <laughs> there was uh, someone wanted an ad for um, <clears throat> an adult site. <laughs> okay. Um, you mean ninety percent of YouTube comments? Yes, and uh, it was <laughs> it was just funny because the 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 ad was positioned more as a don't say it. Don't say the actual like all of this, like hemming and hawing and beating around the bush about, you know, what we're really talking about is sex here. But right. like trying to use euphemism and innuendo and and it was just hysterical. Um, one ad I cut for uh, one of my show hosts, uh, Kenny C is his name, and he's still broadcasting to these days. 13 years later, he's still hosting the same show. But wow, he wanted a, a promo uh, cut. And <laughs> I was able to put on a voice of a young uh, urban rapper. No. Yes. Are you and, kidding? And that was so much fun. And, and it was a lot of, you know, audio manipulation and, and changing the, the pitch of my voice. But it was all about developing a certain cadence and a certain way of pronunciation that would fit this thing that he needed, right? Because he just couldn't find anybody in his peer group that was able to deliver a line, so to speak, or be able to record a promo without sounding like some schmuck who's reading off a, of a script. And that was one of the things I could do. So I actually, that's probably the one that was more fun was, was that promo ad for him. And it was a whole, I mean, it was just so, it would never be acceptable today, bro. Never in a million years <laughs> Would it be acceptable for this white guy to be sitting there playing the part of a young African American um, hyping up a hip hop show? Like, wow, that was not cool. But it was it, it was great. He loved it, and and um, you know, it it brought him some brought him some revenue. So that's wild. Yeah. I, I knew that you cut some voiceovers. I didn't know. To what extent? So I love I love wild. voiceovers. Oh, so much fun. <laughs> well, I appreciate all the time that you've spent with me at this point. Oh, yeah. um, hopefully at some point we'll we'll get back together and, and do some more conversations. Uh, ultimately, um, if you if anyone that is listening wants to check this stuff out, this is technically the first advertisement, quote unquote, I think, Ooh. of this podcast will fail. So if you made it this far, check Dennis out over at this podcast will fail, but no one's listening right now. So. Oh, stop. That's my <laughs> mind. You're not allowed to say that. That's what I say. Don't steal my shit. Come on. But you know what? We I do, appreciate. We, we do. We have a lot more work to do. We have to get other people involved. We do. We do. But again, I appreciate the time. Uh, this is Caleb. Dennis, we're out of here. Thanks.